all right friends so in today's video we will continue our work on this character editor right here and yeah so let's start off by going inside of here and we will now need to create a screen gui so this is the part where we are going to create all of this gui stuff which is going to be a little bit boring i'm going to try to speed up the video i'm just going to mention some key points right here which you should remember because um, those ones are important for our gui but also for all of the assets we are going to create in the future episodes so this gui right here is going to contain an editing option for the hair for the face for the clothing means shirts pants and accessories and for skin color as well okay so i have to note that down because we are going to you know work towards that goal in our future episodes as well and yeah so those are all of the options our character editor is going to have now i'm going to start with designing this gy right here and yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm probably going to speed up the video at this point so see ya All right, so while creating this whole thing, I've decided to just only create this one frame right here, so this hair frame. When we start off with different elements, I'm just going to you know, duplicate this and then edit it that it fits to the next element. But for now, we are only going to work on the hair right here, okay? So what we are going to do now is that we are going to create a data store. And... But before we actually do that, let's actually make this frame appear once this process right here happens. So all we got to do is that we have to make sure that this is disabled. And then let's remove those prints. And local hair frame. So I'm going to create a variable right here. And this one is going to refer to this frame. But let me quickly rename this to something else. So character editor GUI. Now, all you gotta do is that you have to write script.parent. So this is our script. The parent refers to the parent of this object, which is the storage GUI instance. And then we can refer to this character editor GUI because this one is a child of this storage GUI parent as well. And then we can refer to anything inside of here. In this case, we want to refer to this hair frame. I can recommend you to do this because sometimes when you when you try to refer to things on a client. I don't know how this works, but the client sometimes loads too fast and uh, even faster than some other instances you're trying to refer to. And then you end up trying to refer to something which was non-existent at that split second, but then is existent later on, you know. So it's just something which, which comes from experience. So now we have referred to this hair frame. All you got to do is uh, 
we want to make sure that it is visible and then we want to tween this thing so game get service tween service create func nah, nah, function create uh here frame i'm gonna be explaining this in a second do not worry so tween info let's make this easy style let's pick this one actually come on easy direction out Position you them to new there we go and let's play this now before we move on all right so I'm gonna be playing this and then you hopefully understand what this twin service does so Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting this. Look. So remember how I've explained that you have to use wait for child? Well, we had to use it on this one and not on the hero frame. Ah. Yeah. As you can see, this character customization hair frame just appeared out of nowhere. So let's test it out again so that you can really see it. So what this tween service does is, um, so when you remember the position of this hair frame, which is somewhere right here, okay? So we've just moved it right here. So what the tween service does is instead of changing this position from here to here directly without any transition whatsoever, the tween service is able to create a smooth transition in between the first state of the position which is right here, and a second state of the position, which is here. Okay, so this is our goal state, which we want to achieve. So we want to achieve that this hair frame appears on our screen. And this is done by moving the hair frame out of this, you know, this, this invisible area into the visible area. Okay, and this happens via tween service. And it also has a transition, which you guys, or which, which you were able to see for a small amount of seconds. And moreover, this tween service does not only work with positions, but it works with any on any other number property right here. So I could do this with size as well, with the transparency as well, you know. So this is how the tween service works. So you add the instance you want to work with inside of here. And then you add a bunch of settings called tween info in here. So the first setting is the time in which this tween is done, which is 0.5 seconds right here. The easing style, which is exponential, and the easing direction, which is out. There is a whole Dev Hub article on all of the easing styles and easing directions and how they look like. And there are a bunch of more settings you can do, so you can determine whether this whole process is being repeated and whatsoever. So a bunch of stuff which we are not going to bother with. And this third argument right here, so instead of those curly brackets, they define the goal status you're trying to achieve. So the goal position we want to achieve, which is right here, okay? So these numbers, they make the frame pop up right here. All right. So that's actually it for today's episode. In the next episode, I'm going to try to create a data store for our character customization. So we are literally laying the foundation for everything in the next video, guys. Now, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, share this video to all of your friends. Leave me feedback in the comment section. Turn on the notifications, guys. And see ya.